this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Good evening. Uh, my name is Brendan Miller, and I am legal counsel at Freedom Corp, which represents uh, the protesters that were just in Ottawa in uh, January and February. I don't represent uh, anyone who was at Coots. Okay. Uh, but I have a few questions for you. Sure. Um, if we could please first bring up, and I, I know my friend was trying to avoid investigative privilege, and I, I have something to, that may assist and uh, deal with that. Could we please bring up POE? dot hrf zero 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 eight so sir uh what this is is uh it's a news article by uh, cbc journalists megan grant and rachel ward and i understand in september of this year uh they brought an application and got access to some of the itos in the matter and what this is is a, a summary of what's in those itos and for the folks at home uh, what that means is an information to obtain, it's an affidavit, an application from a police officer to obtain a search warrant. So I'm wondering if we can just scroll through this and if you can tell me, um, I'm not going to have to read it to you, just if the, the facts in here are accurate, because these are public facts and we don't need to worry about uh, any form of issue with privilege. So what I can tell you is that I, uh, you know, obviously I, I think you probably assume that I haven't read the ITOs and I'm not familiar with the facts uh, in the ITOs. Um, so I'm not sure how much I can uh, assist with okay, well, to your question. Well, maybe if I can, I guess I was going to try just to uh, avoid having to go through it, and I'll see if uh, if this information I put to you, uh, you can agree with. So uh, I understand that for that operation, uh, the, the undercover operation, there was a wiretap as well as a search warrant uh, for the raids. Is that about, do you remember that? Or you're aware of that? Yes. Right. And there was two um, undercover uh, officers uh, from the RCMP uh, embedded uh, with these individuals uh, who were eventually arrested. Is that fair? Um, again, I'm, I'm going to refrain from uh, getting into any of the details uh, of that particular investigation as those charges are, are before the courts. Right. And I, I understand that. And this is all from this article. I'm not taking it from anywhere else. Um, it's, and, and I can appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. It, it, is a, it is a news article, right? It's, it's not from uh, a court document uh, itself. So, again, right. my, my hesitancy. I understood. Uh, but it's, it's fair to say that the entire time with these individuals, uh, almost from the get-go, the RCMP knew about them and they were on it. Is that fair? Uh, I don't believe it's fair. That's not my understanding. Okay, but from early February, is it fair, um, prior to their arrest, around February 5th, uh, they were aware of these individuals, and the first one was arrested on the 13th, Mr. Uh, Lysak, and the remainder uh, were arrested on the 14th. No, we weren't aware of them on, on February 5th. Okay, and can you give a date of when you did become aware of these individuals? As I mentioned earlier, we became aware of uh, potentially a cache of weapons uh, on, the, on the 9th of February. 9th of February. All right. And uh, according to this article, um, the two undercover officers uh, essentially interacted with these gentlemen uh, in a bar and were able to gather intel, and that led to the arrest and the raid on the house. Is that fair? Uh, again, I'm I'm very hesitant right. to comment. Thank okay. you. Well, that's the this article just outlines that, and I understand the ITOs are actually publicly available, so I'll try to get those for the commission, so they just have a better understanding. Um, I can probably get them from Alberta sometime next week. Uh, if we can bring up uh, pb. dot nsc. dot can. dot zero 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 three zero three nine underscore rel.0001. Okay. Have you seen this document before? I, I saw this document just very briefly before I uh, took the stand here this evening. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so you're familiar then uh, with respect to this document being a memorandum, I believe from your uh, legal department in March of 2020 with respect to uh, the Emergencies Act, but it's not speaking about a public order emergency. Uh, it's speaking about a public welfare emergency regarding COVID. Is that fair? Uh, again, I'm not 
uh, I wouldn't say I'm familiar with the document, sir. Um, yeah. I just had it uh, uh, put in front of me okay. a short time ago. Could we please scroll down, though? All right. And I just want to take you to the role of the RCMP. And uh, my colleague uh, with the CCF touched on this a bit with the commissioner. But this summarizes it nicely and given us an internal document. Um, there at the second point, it states that under Section 18A of the RCMP Act and Section 141A of the RCMP regulations, RCMP members serving as peace officers have a duty to enforce the law. And it's speaking to orders invoked under the Emergencies Act. So is it fair to say that, I know you haven't been overly familiar with this document, but mm -hmm. when there was the invocation of the Emergencies Act, was it your understanding that the RCMP, due to the operation of Section 18 uh, of the Act and then of the RCMP Act and 14 of the RCMP regulation, uh, was compelled uh, as a matter of duty and law uh, to carry out enforcing uh, the orders that were passed under uh, the Emergencies Act? I'm not sure that I understand your question. So uh, the purpose that that's in there is that it's explaining that Section 18A of the RCMP Act and Section 14A uh, of the RCMP regulation uh, collectively require the duty to enforce the law. And when the order that is passed under the invocation is passed, that it's at least implicitly uh, that those two sections of the RCMP Act and the, or the section of the RCMP Act and the regulation compel the RCMP uh, to carry out whatever is in those orders. Is that fair? It seems to suggest that, yes. yes. Right. Sorry. And uh, with it, it, David Shirogi for the Government of Canada, yeah. just a brief objection to that last question, and I understand that a response has been given. The witness has testified that he's not inherently familiar with the document, and the question that was just asked is, to provide his opinion as to the purpose of certain sections of the document within a legal opinion. Uh, and given the testimony we've had, I, I'm not sure that's right. I understand. an entirely He's, proper question I'm, to be I'm asking gonna, this witness. I'm going to move on. Uh, he's answered the question. So you've been an RCMP officer uh, pretty much your whole entire career, I take it. You didn't have a second career before what you're doing. That's correct. Right. And you've, you've worked in, you're essentially in the highest ranks of uh, what you can do within the RCMP subject to becoming a full-time commissioner like Miss Lucky. Is that fair? Correct. All right. Um, could you opine at all or give us evidence that when a regulation or an order is passed by an executive branch of government, um, that requires certain things and certain conditions or puts uh, restrictions uh, on uh, any area or individual, that due to the operation of Section 18A of the RCMP Act and Section 141A of the RCMP regulation, that essentially the passer of that regulation or the passer of that order is able to direct what the police are to do. And, again, sorry, I'm again. just going to object again. These are legal interpretation questions that are being asked of the witness, and that's inappropriate in our view. I'll rephrase. Have you had situations arise where there is orders in council or regulations that dictate uh, whether specifically or whether implicitly that the RCMP has to do something uh, with regards to carrying out that regulation or with regards to carrying out the order in council? Nothing comes to mind uh, at this particular moment. Right. So it's a very, if there is an order or a regulation that would compel the RCMP to do something, that would be a very exceptional thing to interfere uh, in the direction of policing. Is that fair? You're asking a very hypothetical question. I don't know that I can comment. That's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you recognize this document, Deputy Commissioner? I believe I do, but I wouldn't mind if we were able to scroll, uh, scroll down through it. Right, thank just you. Just quickly. 
Yes, I do, I do recognize it. Thank you. And I just the, the only questions I have about this is 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 to ask you if if first of all does this document accord with your understanding of the uh, at least the publicly available information about the investigation? Yes. And the the point uh, uh, that I'd like to draw to your attention is the uh, section under assessment which reads, to date, there has been no information uncovered to suggest that there is an organized effort between the individuals charged in Alberta and individuals involved in the Ottawa protest. Do you see that there? I do. And that's your understanding of the assessment of the criminal uh, investigation to date? That is, yes. Thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Okay.